Let's talk about, um, you know, internet shutdowns. Uh, and uh, again, uh, I remember when I was used to go to, uh, I think my grandma uh, and used to visit her, like the connectivity used to be very uh, bad there. And it's like, uh, for me as a teenager, my, my whole life would just shamble <laughs> because my, all my friends are on Facebook and things like that. And, and, and we're all just connected. So uh, let's talk about those shutdowns. And um, you know, again, as you mentioned, Net NetBlocks is known to monitor and spread the news about the uh, internet shutdown. So, uh, you know, if we dig deeper, could you define what an internet shutdown is at the core of it? So an internet shutdown is an overloaded term. And it's actually a term that we don't like using all that much because it means so many different things to different people. But there is a core factor here, which is intent. An internet shutdown implies that people have been cut off from either the whole internet or part of the internet, um, and that this has been done purposely, that, that someone has decided, really, you know, I don't want these people communicating, I don't want, um, say, my, my country being online, it may be a political scandal, it may be a crisis, it may be a misguided attempt to actually reduce uh, conflict or disagreement, but in all cases, is at, at its core, is that it is all about uh, somebody deciding that the internet should be cut. So an internet shutdown uh, affects a mass scale. It can be um, affecting core network connectivity, uh, really almost at the physical layer or the network layer. So you, you know you, your modem lights won't blink, your phone will not connect to your your cellular network. But it can also be more more um, bro uh, less broad than that. It can be more targeted towards key communications infrastructure, either telephony or even social media platforms. So uh, for us. Uh, the main part of the focus is on these total blackouts of communications, but we also track uh, impacts to social platforms that people can work around and find ways to really get back online. And, uh, you know, these have disproportionate effects on people's daily lives and human rights. So it's vital to monitor it. And when we talk about like who's doing these attacks, because uh, we, we spoke about the government, the government can do that. Well, so over the years, you know, we've seen so many different scenarios different ways that the internet is shut off or that these uh, these uh, censorship incidents are implemented. We've seen some common themes. It it's, tends to be somebody or an organization in a position of power. Now, this could mean, say, a president or a prime minister has um, secretly ordered an issue to internet providers to turn off internet connectivity, but it can also be more legalistic. There may be an open and transparent audit uh, issued again to those companies or to the core gateway providers, in some cases even disconnecting uh, subsea cables to disconnect countries. Uh, and now the key thing is here, it's coming top down. So it's an order that the internet providers have to uh, comply with. If they refuse, quite often their staff are threatened, pressured. So it's a scary business. Um, this can happen uh, during political crises. We, we monitor elections, for example, the Netbox uh, Election Pathfinder project is monitoring elections to see if people are able to connect and stay connected during elections. We also monitor connectivity during crises, during uprisings, uh, during during peaceful protests. And, and these are some of the events where you, you see surprising the broad um, measures to switch people off in countries where you'd like to not see that really. Also, you have conflict, war. And this is one of the frightening ones, because even if your own government is really fighting to keep internet connectivity. Say, look at Ukraine. Uh, then um, during during the recent invasion, we've seen that Russia is able to exert uh, controls on this neighboring country. So these are also internet shutdowns, even though they're imposed by a different party. So you have all of these different phenomena coming together to create an internet that isn't always available when it should be.